By the end of this video, you will know something more about every one of the new filters we have coming out in wave two of the Maven Magnetic Photography filter line. The wave two date is set for Wednesday, December 27th, going to be at 8 a.m. Pacific time is when we press the launch button. We've already been approved by Kickstarter. It's very close, so I wanted to get this additional information out there. This is kind of like a show and tell, give you some additional thoughts in terms of the design of the rings and why we did what we did. In our original Kickstarter last year, it was a huge success. So thankful for all of your support, and we'll try to get more of these videos out explaining how these filters can change what you do photography or videography wise. One of the most common questions that we get is what sizes of filters are going to be supported in this next Kickstarter? It's going to be 82, 77, 72, and 67 millimeters. Now, I don't want to overwhelm anybody, but we have 17 new filters, but many of them are in the same class or category, so it's really about five different types of filters, and we're going to talk about each of those real quick. Originally, when Maven filters came out last year, there were basically five filters. There were the 3NDs, a polarizer, a CPL, and a splash guard. Many of you have asked for more NDs to do a number of different things, including Two in a four stop, this is typically what is asked by professional videographers who just want a nice solid ND to slap on. They want greater control of the filtration. So you can see that every ND is designated the number of stops in notches. So you can see two notches here. This is a two stop filter. It is money green. We're calling it the money maker simply because this is something that a professional would want to have that degree of precision when using an ND filter. P-I-N-K, four letters, pink, four notches. So this is a four stop ND filter, solid. Very high performance, AGC optical Japanese glass. All of the ND filters have 16 layers of MRC, plus we have the hydrophobic layer, which allows you to clean it much more easily. The next three filters we're calling our Ultra NDs, which is a 15 stop, 18 stop, and 20 stop. The 15 stop is a deep brown with 15 notches. Our 18 stop filter, if you're just getting into super long exposures or you, you're considering shooting the eclipse on April 8th, 2024, this is the one that we recommend that you start with because it's the most balanced of the three, silver and black. It can be used for really long landscape exposures where you're going to get movement from moving trees, for example, or waves or the sky. Everything else will stay locked down. It can give you a really surreal look. Love this filter. And then we have our 20 stop black ND. This will allow one one millionth the amount of light into your camera. So this is ultra long exposures. Many of you have asked for a 20 stop and now we have it. Let's talk a little bit about the new quick case. The original quick case was blue and it was designed to allow you to see through the case and to see your filters. And we've made some changes because the slots on the first one on the inside are very narrow. They're very thin. They will only hold like NDs. So we have all of these kind of wider four millimeter CPLs. We needed something that could hold the wider ones in the middle. And so this is really the main gist of the design. We also wanted to have two large slots on the outside. So if you wanted to have, for example, your new Maven cap or maybe a step up ring in there, everything could fit within your case. You could close it and you can always see what you have in your filter case. The next categories of filters that we have are sometimes referred to as dark CPLs. So the idea on these is to combine our original CPL with our original NDs into one filter. So this is a three stop and this is the CPL. So you can see that they're red and blue, obviously. And we have a combo filter that does the same thing as these two, basically. Some other important differences between these two is that when you take a three stop and you add a polarizer, it's really now like a four or four and a half stop. These are designed to be at three stops. You're not getting your 4.5 stops. This is a three stop dark CPL. Another thing is that CPL films most often have a very minor yellowish hue to them, including the, the first Maven CPL is a very small tint. And we used the color correction of the ND to remove that. So these are actually better color wise than our original CPL. We went through a lot of work to make sure the notches can still be moved under a lens hood, that they're deep enough, and they are. And so the dark CPLs mean that if you use polarizers a lot with your ND filters, you have one less filter to carry. This also dramatically improves vignetting on wide angle lenses. Now, the way we read these is very similar to how we read the original Maven filters. Anything that's blue is a polarizer. 
Anything that's red is three stops. So you can see what we have red with a blue ring. This is a three stop CPL. Six stops was purple. So purple with blue, this is a dark six stop CPL. And then our gold was 10 stops. So this is gold with CPL. So this is a 10 stop dark CPL. Something else that you'll notice is that each of the notches are different lengths. And this allows for vision impaired photographers to feel the difference in the CPLs in terms of the length of the exposure they're getting. We have colorblind photographers who use Maven filters. We have legally blind photographers who use Maven filters. And so essentially what we're trying to do is to create a braille system that every filter is unique in its appearance as well as its touch. And we have some patents pending on both of these, nothing confirmed yet, but hopefully in 2024. So this is the second class of filters, which is the dark CPLs. So coming back to the discussion on polarizers is this is a new polarizer we have that you'll notice that it's a deeper, darker blue than the original. The main difference between these two is that as light passes through a CPL, it comes out in a helical shape, whereas linear polarizers emit more in a plane, planar formation. CPLs were very important for DSLRs because of how light would bounce off the mirror into the camera's focusing array and the metering system. And because a mirror is a flat, hard surface that isn't metal, the light would bounce off of it in weird ways. So your metering would go all over the place. And so CPLs have been a staple for landscape photographers for many years, simply because the metering systems would not be tricked. However, the industry is shifting over mostly to mirrorless cameras and that mirror array is, isn't in a lot of the cameras that we have. So a linear polarizer is absolutely fine. And the linear polarizer has an advantage in that this particular film that we found is, is extremely color neutral. When we ran it through the tests side by side with the control, it was essentially even with the control. There was no change in color, even using sensitive measuring tools. Get a little bit of color change in the corners, but a lot of that is due to vignetting and, and things of that nature. Suffice it to say, this is the most color neutral film-wise of a polarizer I've ever tested. Polarizers will change the color of the sky. I mean, in also objects that are reflecting polarized light, that's how polarizers work is they can block a certain amount of light coming through, but polarizers cannot be absolutely color neutral, but their film can be. Now, the thing that's interesting about these two is that if we take the linear polarizer and we put it in front of the CPL, the original CPL, we now get a variable ND. As I rotate this, you can see that it's getting darker. Many of you have asked for a dedicated variable ND for Maven filters. This will be our first official attempt into the variable filter lineup, but we do it by combining polarizers. And this is how variables work, is you combine polarizers. We did a ton of tests on existing variables. Most of them lean heavy yellow because of this CPL film. So what this means is that there's two ways you can get to a general variable using Maven filters. You can go with the original CPL, the linear polarizer in front. If you want near perfect color performance in regards to film, stack two LPLs and you get that same effect. So this is two linear polarizers. So if you have a mirrorless camera and you need a polarizer, I would recommend the linear polarizer over the original CPL. If you own a DSLR and you're still using it to meter, I would definitely recommend sticking with the CPL. Now, something that is amazing about this guy, the linear polarizer, and this is the reason why we went with a linear polarizer. Anytime we put the linear polarizer in front of any Maven CPL, it turns this into a variable. So as I rotate it, you can see it getting darker. So this is going to add about 1.3 to five stops filtration on top of the three stops. So this is gonna be about a 4.5 to about an eight. So what this means is that we've simplified your tools in allowing you to stack them in such a way to get the tool that you want. You don't have to carry dedicated, what they call VNDs in your camera bag. You don't need to have four or five of them. You can assemble your Maven filters into an array or an assembly that can get you the result that you want. Now, something I should note is that the more you stack these, the more vignetting you will get. But if you zoom in or if you are okay stepping up, then you can get around those problems. But anyway, that's the linear polarizer. The next filter I'm gonna talk about is the grad filter. I'm very excited about this. I've been a, a landscape sunset photographer for about 16 years. Anybody who shot a landscape into a sunset 
using a grad filter knows what a pain it is to carry these filter assemblies, these big things that you put on the front of your camera and you drop glass in front. The problem is, is that they're big, they're bulky and they're heavy. And I like my camera bag space. I don't want it living in my camera bag. They can weigh anywhere from 200 to 250, 300 grams plus the glass. And so what would happen to me is I would go down to the beach and I wouldn't bring it. And then there'd be this amazing sunset and I don't have my grad tools. And so, uh, you know, now I'm taking multiple images and stacking them and now I'm editing. Just, just slows the whole process down. And I wanted a grad filter that could live in our camera bags. So this is the Maven half fill three stop grad filter. You'll notice that the language on the side of the ring we have these two little red rectangles. The two is the reciprocal of the fill. So one over two is one half. You know that it's three stops because it's red and the silver here designates that it's also clear on the other side. So for the weight of just about 16 grams, you can hardly feel the weight. This can live in your camera bag. You can slap it on the front of your camera and you can always have a solution with you instead of needing to carry a 250 or a 300 gram perfect solution. This should suffice in most cases. I know many of you will not want to put the horizon at the one half mark. If you are shooting in your native thread size, we also have the one third fill. You can see there's just a slight amount of difference. So if you're just getting started in grads, I would recommend starting with the one half three stop. We're going to have some more variants coming in the near future. This is the Maven Magic variable grad filter. You'll notice it has two triangles on the side. They're silver. Triangles designate a variable feature or function, meaning you can increase from low to high. When we look at it from the front, you'll see that we have this half fill. This is a polarizing film. And when we take this filter and we put it underneath the linear polarizer, a bunch of really weird things happen. So this filter will allow us to control three different variables of the grad. We can control the filtration, by rotating the linear polarizer from 1.3 to five stops, which is an incredibly awesome feature because when you're shooting sunsets, the sky changes a lot. So you have the sun, now it's going down, now it's behind the clouds. So you might have three different exposures of the sky literally within a few minutes. And to get that right with your grad filter, you would have to swap your, your grad filter out or take multiple exposures. This allows you to have stepless control over the filtration of the grad line. Now, something that's totally bizarre, and I'll cover this in a later video, is that you also have control over the position of the line itself and the characteristic of it, whether it's super hard or whether it's softer. And you can control those by changing the focal length or the aperture. This is by design. They were made specifically to do this. I'll cover it in another video. But suffice it to say, the new Magic Maven Variable Grad allows you to control the filtration. It allows you to control the position of the grad line, and it also allows you to adjust the strength of the edge itself. And I'll be demonstrating this in another video. So we just have a few of the specialty filters left. This is the Maven 720 Infrared. Definitely something that high-end landscape photographers would have in their camera bag. You'll notice that it's designated in the knurling by a red wavy line. Most modern cameras have an infrared filter that eliminates infrared light from hitting the sensor. You can do a camera conversion where somebody goes in and removes the filter and allows you to take infrared images at faster shutter speeds. Suffice it to say, not everybody wants to have their camera converted because it's usually expensive and it's usually irreversible. So the idea on the 720 is its job is to block out visible light below 720 nanometers. Most IR filters still allow for a little bit of IR to penetrate the filter into the sensor, which means is that if you put this on your camera lens, you're blocking out most visible light. And if you do a long exposure, you can still capture infrared images. Infrared has surreal looking qualities. For example, vegetation will be white, water in the sky will be darker, and it also allows you to do extremely long exposures during the daytime. It is absolutely a phenomenal way to get into infrared photography without destroying a camera or without spending a lot of money for the camera conversion. This white filter here, you'll notice it's a very light, very thin filter. It's kind of hard to see on video, but there's this etching on the glass. This is referred to as a Batnov mask. I call it the starry focus filter. And its purpose is to allow 
photographers or videographers to focus on stars. You put it on the front of your lens, you zoom into the star, and you will get these crosshairs that when they are symmetrical will tell you that your stars are in focus, then you would lock your focus down, pop it off, and then you can start shooting your astrophotography. It will greatly enhance the speed at which you can get focus lock of stars and astrophotography. It's called the Batnov Mask Starry Focus Filter. These two guys here are what we're calling our plasma flare filters. You'll notice we have a gold streak on this one and a blue streak on this one. Kind of hard to see on the video, but in person you'll be able to see this is that this gold one has all these yellow lines going through it. These mimic anamorphic lens flares. You'll see them in J.J. Abrams movies where you have this blue or gold streak in the background. So we have both a gold and a blue plasma streak filter. Many of you have asked about the new cap, why it exists, what the features are, what in the world is going on with it. So the problem with the original cap, which is, which is a great cap, by the way, if you're looking for a really strong cap, go with the original cap. But the problem is, is that when we put the caps on the lenses under a lens hood, there was no way to grab the middle of it. So this is a grab ring here in the middle that most people should be able to grab and pull off or grab it this way. You'll also notice that it has a, this beveled edge, and this will allow you to tilt it if you want to make sure your filters are staying on there. But something that's special about this is that we've reduced the magnetic strength by about one and a half to two newtons. So this is a slight touch weaker than the original cap. My assistant Adam says he cannot feel the difference, but I've actually measured it using a, a newton met meter. It's a little bit weaker. And the idea on this is that if you have a filter you know, on your lens, you can grab this filter and pull it directly off and it's not going to stick to these other filters. So that's why it's just a little bit weaker. Now, there is a hidden secret in this in that we have this grip ring that can be removed if you want to remove it. Why would we want to remove the grip ring? The reason is, is we have a number of accessories coming in 2024 that will change your grip on the cap. Maybe you want to have a bigger grip. Maybe you want to have another type of accessory here. There's a lot of ideas that we're playing with. But this is our first dive into making a customizable lens cap. Very excited. I love using it because it's just super easy. I know the filters are going to stay on, but this is also included as an add-on on our Kickstarter. Here is the original step-up ring that we had, and you notice that there's no glass in it. Many of you have asked for a step-up splash adapter. So basically what a step-up adapter does is it allows you to use larger filters onto smaller threaded lenses. This new filter here allows you to have some protection. We're coming out with like six or seven sizes initially, the most popular sizes. Suffice it to say, it is a step-up adapter with a splash guard built into it. So let's talk real quick about stretch goals. Some of them I cannot talk about on the video. We have to wait until we actually reach those goals. But one of them we can talk about is something that we're calling the low rider ring, which brings us to a discussion about the 16 to 35 2.8 G Master from Sony. This is an extremely finicky lens in regards to vignetting. So when you're shooting at 16 millimeters and you start putting filters on here, to, and it's, it's, you're gonna see variation from copy to copy. We've seen this in our own tests is that you can have the same exact lens and have different um, vignetting performance between the two of them. Suffice it to say that when you're shooting at 16 and you start stacking filters on here, you're going to see vignetting earlier on this lens than any other lens. And we have customers who do not want to step up. Usually vignetting is solved by, you know, if I, this is an 82 millimeter lens, I would use a 95 millimeter filter and that gets rid of the vignetting, but many of them don't want to do that. They want to use an 82 millimeter filter on an 82 millimeter lens, even though that's how vignetting happens. So the solution that we came up with is something called the low rider ring. This is what it looks like. This is a simple piece of metal and it has satisfied many of our 16 to 35 customers. The low rider ring essentially sits on the inside of the lens itself. You can see that I can even put it on just with my fingers. And you'll notice that we have these little holes there. There, are, these are these are pen holes. So I can basically just take it and turn it on as you know as far as I want. And we're trying to get it basically flat with the lens itself. Now this is just a plain piece of metal that's magnetic to the filter, so you can't really stack a lot of these. But as long as you don't bump the tripod, you're probably going to be okay. This eliminates vignetting completely on the 16 to 35, especially if you're using a dark CPL. So I know many of you will be interested in that. We'll also come out with them in 77 and 72 millimeters, just if you want something 
to pop onto your lens when you're shooting. So in conclusion, that is a summary of our Kickstarter 2 coming out December 27th, 2023, 8 a.m. Pacific time. If any of those filters interest you, definitely take a look at it. You're going to be able to get them at very deep discounts, like 70% off in some cases. Take advantage of that offer, especially in the first few days. We're gonna have a ton of questions I know. Feel free to ask them in the comments below and I'll have some additional Maven filter videos coming out. I also wanna just say thank you to everybody so much for your support over this last year. I've been very busy with aid work and, and mostly focusing on the filters, but you guys have all been amazing. And I look forward to answering your questions in the comments below. Thanks again.